Hi, I'm Brian, Service Manager Whole Latte Love, and today we're going to talk about cleaning your portafilter and portafilter basket. Hey, not that hard to do, really, right? No, but important. super simple, super simple. So you got um, one there. Yep. So this one needs a little cleaning. It's not the worst, but yeah. it's definitely about time. Uh, just in case you've never done this before, it's, the basket locks into the portafilter because of the spring that's in here. Mm -hmm. A little clip right there. That can be taken out if you want to clean it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's good just to leave it in there as well. And you just rip that thing right out with your fingernails now. Yeah. There's other ways to yeah, do my, that. Yeah, my fingernails are made of titanium, <laughs> so okay. uh, that works for me. Uh, there's other ways to do it. If it's being stubborn, doesn't want to pop out, you can take another basket, pry it underneath it, and twist, and that'll pop it up. Uh, they also sell some uh, very fancy tools for doing such. Uh, I think uh, we got those, don't we? Yeah, yeah. We do have the portafilter filter basket ejector tool, yes. Yeah, see, I, I'm kind of a Neanderthal. I just mm -hmm. kind of force things out. So I just Mark had my knows manicure. way better than I do about this stuff. <laughs> I just had my manicure, so. No, no, see? <laughs> okay. There you go. Perfect for you. I'll get you one for Christmas. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start off just by throwing this one in a solution that we've already made, just so you can see in live time how long it takes for it to get clean from just sitting there. Sure. So... And go and drop the basket in there and order filter. I'm just gonna, this one's a little bit low, so I'm just gonna kind of move it around a little bit, make sure it's gotten all over everything. Mm -hmm. And there shouldn't be any air trapped in there because of the hole in the top, so I'm gonna put it in that way. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what are we using? So mm -hmm. this is Kafiza made by Ernex. And this uh, is just like, what everybody uses, right? I mean, yeah, that I mean, not not everybody, because somebody's going to say, "Hey, I don't use that." Oh yes, uh, yes you're right. <laughs> yeah. There, there's other options available. Uh, Ernex is what I've used most of my career. Mm -hmm. uh, it's most common one you'll find product you'll find in cafes and stuff around, at least around our area. So, and for uh, the average person at home, that that thing at Cafes would probably last them. I don't know, close to a year maybe, depending on how Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, depending on how often you clean and what you're using it to clean. You know, mm -hmm. I'll use mine for back flushing on both my espresso machines and our pour over machine, mm -hmm. my iBrick, my, yeah, okay. all the equipment we have. So I, I go through a little bit more frequently, but yes. And uh, so that, we're clear, last that's not a descaler. That is not a descaler, correct. A couple times that people ask me, so how much Kafiza should I use to descale? I'm like, no, don't do that, please. Yeah, no, no. That, that'd be Descale that you would yeah. use. Okay. So not Kafiza. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so this solution is really quick and easy to make. Uh, you probably already use it or something like it when you are back flushing your espresso machine. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Oh, you've got those use. special little scoopy tool from Ernex there, huh? Yep. So you got your standard size little scoop there. Um, you know, one heaping scoop right into the basket when you back flush. Right. Uh, if you level this off, uh, three, three level scoops with this is uh, equivalent to what you would put into one liter of water mm -hmm. if you were making a bath like this. Okay. Uh, so that's six grams per liter. Two grams per scoop if my math is working. Your math okay. is working good. All yep. right. So, uh, yep, you can use that if you don't have that. You can use your scale, six grams per liter, or what do we say, a heaping teaspoon? Yes, heaping teaspoons, about six grams. Yep. So. And if you're off a gram or two, no big deal. Yeah. You yeah. could also just eyeball it. I mean, yeah. you know, just don't go too crazy with it and you're all right. If so you, now you, you don't can... use enough, then you just got to do it for longer. So. All right. You're going to use hot water, right? And yes. So let's mix some up, huh? Yep, let's do it. So I'm gonna use it just straight out of our Rocket Apartmento. You could mm -hmm. boil it, whatever, however you get it. It doesn't need to be boiling, but the hotter the water is, the better it tends to dissolve inside the water. So, mm -hmm. okay, one, two. I thought you were gonna pull out the scale, but you're, you're good with a scoop, huh? I'm good with a scoop, <laughs> okay. I'm all right. So okay. what do we got here? This is a liter and a half, so I'm gonna yeah. go a little over a liter's worth. A little guesstimation there. Yeah, sure. okay. yeah. This is why I'm horrible at baking, yeah. so, just so everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, baking's, if I, if I ever baking's send you very cookies, precise, right? Yeah, if I ever yeah. send you cookies, they're probably not going to very yeah. be very good. So, get in there, fill her up with hot water. 
They need to mix it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend putting your hand right underneath boiling water pouring out of a spout, but I'm a maniac, so this is what you get from me. You're a trained professional. Yes, yes, that's a nice way of putting yes. it. We'll call me that. <laughs> All right. Well, I just like to look down at the bottom, make sure I don't see any big chunks still down there that need to be stirred up, but I think it got stirred pretty well. So we're gonna take our friend over here, this out front for you. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's all there is to making the solution. Uh, and you know, like we said, this is a liter and a half pitcher, went a little bit less than a liter and a half with solution just because we want we don't want to go all the way to the top or we'll you need dump some it out. room. Yeah. Yep, little room. Mm -hmm. So this one hopefully will sink in further than that. We went with the clear bowls like this just so you guys can see better, but you use something a little bit taller. Nice, uh, uh, something that works really well and you can use it for dual purpose is mm -hmm. if you have a French press. Mm -hmm. Just be really careful, don't drop it hard because ah, not that I've glass, ever right? done that. Yeah, uh, okay. Sorry, honey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you, that works really well because you can get vertical in there and just throw, you can only do one at a time, but mm -hmm. I don't know how many people use multiple baskets. I usually just use the one at the house, so. And the fil your filter basket goes right in there as yep, well? Yeah, filter basket goes in there as well. Boop. So I'm going to no. show you this uh, one. Some wood. Yeah. So Ernex is not as gentle on the wood as we would like it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is not caused by Ernex. I will disclaim that right now. I am not mm -hmm. knocking the product. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just some general wear that you'll end up seeing on a wooden port of filter handle mm -hmm. if you don't treat it. Um, I know that's going to prompt a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. I have wooden port of filter handles at home and I use beeswax to treat it, same as I do with any of my wooden utensils in my kitchen, and mm -hmm. I find it works fine. So, but if you have another product that you have used and think works even better than beeswax, let mm -hmm. me know because I'm keen to find out. So, the idea here is that I don't want the Urnex to get all over the wood. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do this one a little bit differently. Now you could, depending on how well your handle is on it, you could just take the handle off mm -hmm. to be completely safe and just dunk it all the way in there uh, for the sake of the video and assuming that you can't, uh, I am going to keep it on there. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying not to get any of the solution on there. I will use my brush and it's the same brush that you can use on your mm -hmm. group head when you're cleaning in there. And just give it a nice scrub around. And just because we're not giving it an actual bath, you may need to do this a little bit more. Okay, I'll give times. it a few more dunks, things like that. Um, so it really kind of depends on how dirty it is. But now, while you're going at that, you know, you've got a filter basket in there, and there are some, you know, filter baskets that have special coatings on them and that kind of thing. You know, what, what about those? So, so yeah, I think uh, you, you described it really well to me earlier when you said to think of it like a nonstick pan. And that coating that makes it a nonstick is not eternal. It will yeah. get worn off after X amount of time. So... The more abuse you give it, the faster that's going to happen. Yes, yeah. exactly. So for if you're using one of those baskets, mm -hmm. instead of using something like a nylon brush like this, mm -hmm. if you just let it soak in the Cafisa for you know a couple minutes, maybe three minutes or so, mm -hmm. you should be able to just take it out, give it a rinse off, and wipe it off, and that'll get it really clean because yeah. So Pretty that nice. didn't really mu take much of anything. I think using yeah. that brush at all on this one was probably overkill. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this wasn't the dirtiest filter basket that we've ever had and by any stretch of the imagination. So that'll come off really clean, really quick. And soap and water just doesn't do this, does it? You're no. Right standard, like, not, you know, yeah. dish detergent isn't going to get yeah, you. Yeah, you, you can try, but 
I, I don't know if you've ever tried to put like your uh, your pour over or French press into the dishwasher and seen mm -hmm. the level of clean that it comes out. You still see that oily residue clean. on it. Yeah. 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 So. Now. So again, being more gentle with this one because of the wood. Yep. So. So we could use a little got, more. Yep. Right? You could use a little bit more. Uh, so you can see there's right where it all beads down into the spout. Is mm -hmm. where you're going to have the heaviest amount of buildup in there. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do is use uh, the little brushes. What do, you, what do you call them? The ones that you use to clean. Oh, the steamy wanda. Yeah, the steamy wanda. Uh, those work smart. really well for being able to get right in there mm -hmm. as well as right in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also just take the spout off completely and it'll get you access to all the little hidden nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. um, but if you actually just soak them like this once every well, couple weeks or so, just for a few minutes, uh, that'll be good enough general maintenance that you're not going to need to go too crazy on a cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I suggest doing it more frequently for shorter periods of time. Okay. Uh, and you know me, I always like to group together my cleaning cycles and my maintenance cycles. So I'll do that with when I'm soaking any of my other equipment. Okay. So that way I'm not just using a whole liter of Kafisa's for one <laughs> small thing. Sure. So. so we've been 10 minutes over here, with, you know, the one we started about. Oh, perfect. I'm curious to see how that looks. All right, let's find out. Okay. All right, so. Some of those sudsies out of there. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, you definitely you'd rinse these and yep, with I would water yeah, you'd yeah, you'd rinse it with water, but you see, you yeah, see it how it just comes right out. Yeah. There's just nothing like how this stuff breaks up those coffee oils. Yeah. Now I could use a slight brush. You know, I got mm -hmm. one spot there that's a little stubborn. Mm -hmm. But you know, you wipe out what you got already. You know, put it in there for another minute or two, and you should be good. We'll see this basket. I think this one was the, yeah, this one was the dirtier of the two that we had yeah. by far. And I mean, even before wiping it off, you That's can see you got a little bit left in the ridge there mm -hmm. um, that we can just tackle with our brush. A little scrape out there. Oh. Drop it back in the water. <laughs> So yeah, I did that on purpose. Just trying to rinse it. Obviously, I'm not going to go through and make it 100% right. for everyone, but you get the idea. Just from sitting in I there, mean, it's thing. They're brand new. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, very little effort that has to go into doing something that makes them look and act brand new for much longer. All right, Brian. Thanks for taking us through that. Yeah, not a problem.